Hello and welcome to episode two of Cook at Home. So today we are going to be making a lovely soup. Now I'm going to do a sweet potato, squash and pepper soup. Um, but it's really important that you don't need to have these exact ingredients. Sorry. So I've got a massive squash here. If you just have sweet potatoes, perhaps you do sweet potato um, and carrot soup. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to show you the method of how to prepare and how to roast these vegetables. So then you can go away and you can make it with whatever you have available. But root veg is really good. It roasts really well. So we're going to roast it in the oven. So I would recommend that you preheated your oven first to about 200 degrees. We're going to roast these for 40 minutes at about that temperature until they're quite tender. So first things first, I'm going to start prepping the veg. So we have onion, like I said, we have carrot. So if you have a white onion, it doesn't matter. But we want to try and cut it all the same size roughly so it can roast evenly in the oven okay so get yourself a tray that has to be pretty about it you can just get it all on there the garlic don't need to slice it just peel it bash it and chuck it in just get rid of the skin just like that so when we roast these we're also going to put some spices in there now Again, you can use whatever spices you really want to use. I have cumin, coriander, herbs, paprika, and then a little scotch bonnet here. Now, if you don't like spice, I would not recommend putting a scotch bonnet here, but it's all personal preference, but I want it to be a little bit warming. On a cold day, I want it to be nice and warming. So, I'm gonna get it all in there. This chili is very, very hot. So if you want to know how hot it is, perhaps you could always Slice a little bit of it, gently put it on your finger, give it a little tap, that's quite hot. So that tells me definitely that's going to be enough. Maybe just half of that should do my soup. Carrot, don't really need to peel the carrot because it's soup, but I'm just gonna get rid of the top bit. Just peel that away, that's fine. Now again, like we said, all fairly even, so it roasts at the same time. Now there's no point having a piece of carrot that big and then a pepper that big. So try and get it all the same size as you can. And then sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel this, you don't have to peel it, but I'm gonna peel it just because it might give me a little bit of a smoother texture. Now, like I said, if you haven't got a squash or you haven't got a carrot, it doesn't matter. You can use really whatever you want. So. This is going to make, I would say, around four nice portions, perhaps, for you guys. Um, it's quite hard to just to make one portion of soup, so you can always use it another day. You can freeze it quite well. You could just share it with someone in your household, okay? So, get rid of that. Again, quite equal sizes. I'm going to cube this up. Probably about that. Same with this bit here. Now sweet potato will give you a really nice smooth velvety texture in your uh, in your soup. And the carrot will give you some sweetness as well as the sweet potato. Um, I've gone for red onion just because I feel it has a little bit more flavour in a soup than you would get from a, uh, a regular white onion. But it doesn't really matter, it's up to you guys. So as you can see from that little bit of veg, we've got quite a lot here. So. This is my squash. You could use a butternut squash. They're quite easy to find nowadays. Um, but this is called a crown brint squash. I mean, if you're lucky enough to, to find one of these, by all means, do get one because they are delicious. So look at that lovely orange color in there. It's beautiful. These are actually grown by my mum in her allotment. So um, I'm very lucky to have those. So we get rid of the seeds and then you can either peel it just with a regular pea there, it will come back. Or you need a knife, completely up to you. It's a bit messy when you use a pea there, but I've started now. We want to make sure that we don't, we get rid of the green bit as well. So you want to get back to that lovely orange flesh. If I just chop it in half, it'll be easier for you to work around. But like I say, whatever you have, that's, that's the key method. And then, you can just go from there. I'm probably just going to use that bit, to be honest with you guys, because my pan's looking quite full. 
and I keep that other bit for another day. Now, when we're talking about what spices we want in there, again, it's up to you. You could do a nice curried, you could do a curried blend if you wanted to. You could do just nice herbs and garlic. Now, like I said, I've got a few spices here. I've got smoked paprika. You could use sweet paprika, it doesn't really matter. But it's gonna give it a nice little kick and a warmth. So I'm just using like a, tea, a teaspoon. You can be quite, whoops. You can be quite liberal, it's completely up to you. Some coriander, some cumin, some herbs. About the same as that. Some herbs. I'm gonna go with two of these. If you have fresh herbs, if you're lucky enough to have some fresh herbs, pop them in. Like we're talking about thyme, rosemary, a bay leaf could work quite well, but perhaps if you use a bay leaf, just remember to take it out at the end. Okay, a little bit of salt, pinch of salt. A few grinds of pepper. We can always season it at the end again, but it's good to build the flavor up. I'm just gonna use some rapeseed oil. Yeah, we can always season it more at the end, so don't worry, you can, you can add seasoning, but you can't take it away. So let's just add a little bit now. Same for the oil. With your hands or a spoon if you want, if your hands are nice and green, mix all that round. You don't need to put loads of oil in there, but just enough to, to start the party off. And then once that's evenly coated, I'm gonna give my hands a little bit of a clean very quickly. So that can now go into the oven, 200 degrees for about 40 minutes, but keep an eye on it. You want it to be quite soft and tender. So I've got one in here already, so. Let's get that one in. And after, after about 40 minutes, we should have something looking like this. So you see all that veg is caramelized, the sweet potato has gone all soft, the squash is all soft, the peppers are lovely and juicy, got a bit of a char on the onions. So that is looking what you want it to look like. So let me quickly clean down my board. But take your time because that will take, it depends on your oven. It completely depends on your oven, guys. That, that might take you 40 minutes, that might take you 20 minutes. But it's all about just keeping an eye on it, checking it, touching it, using your nose, using your fingers, smell it, and we'll go from there. Now, now I've got that. I'm gonna get a pan. If you have like a saucepan, that's fantastic. And we're gonna scrape all of this. Careful with the cloth, because it's quite hot. Scrape it into your pan. Now, make sure you don't miss any of this. So, get all of that in there. The smells are fantastic. All that. Try and scrape all that bit off. If you want, you could get you can get a little bit of water. You can run it in there. Let me just show you. So, a little splash of water. Just try and get the remainder of that, that juice off because this is a really nice flavour which is going to help us, going to help make our soup delicious. Okay, so I'm using a stock, I'm using the homemade stock. Now, if you want to make your own stock, that's fantastic. So the stock that I've used is with onion peelings, uh, carrot peelings and some, some bones, some chicken carcasses left over from dinner but you can equally use stock cubes. Now for this, I'm gonna start off with maybe half a liter of stock. Now you don't wanna add it all in one go. You wanna add it in as we go along. So a stock cube is fine, absolutely fine. You can just use a vegetable stock cube, just anything like that, or some fresh stock. It's all gonna be around about the same consistency. Now, what we want to do is add a little bit at a time. So we're gonna use a stick blender I've got, a, I've got a blender like this, which I'm going to use, but equally you could use a kitchen, kind of like a Nutribullet or one of those machines that kind of blends it as well. That's fine, whatever you have available, okay? Now, I'm going to add just a little bit first, just a little bit. 
and we're going to see what consistency it comes to first. So it could be quite noisy, so I'm sorry if it's noisy. And also very messy, may I add. So don't wear your favourite shirt. Okay. So we're starting to come together. This is making a lovely colour. way more liquid, right? This is nowhere near a soup. So if you're using a blender, it's probably easier in a blender because you can pour the liquid in through the hole, but we're gonna be a bit slower here, but I'm gonna go with that much. Careful, it's gonna splash up at me again now, so. If you want it velvety smooth, at the end you could put it through a sieve, but for me at home, it's not really worth it, so. Now that used all of my liquid. Now it depends how thick or runny that you prefer your soup. Now I'm going to blend this just a touch more but I thought it stopped so you can hear me for once. But it all depends on how smooth you want it. So we could add a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more stock. So that would take me just over half a litre. So maybe one and a half stock cubes would be perfect if you use the stock cubes. So back to the work. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Sorry about the noise. So importantly now guys, we need to taste it. We need to taste our stock, our soup, sorry. So give it a nice good mix again. Grab a little spoon and see what you think. Now mine's gonna be a bit cold maybe because the stock was so cold, but you might want to warm it back through in the, on the pan. Lovely, that's really nice. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Remember at the start we said, if we add all the salt at the once, we can't take it away. So. And a little bit of salt. Whisk that back together. Now you can see here the consistency, quite glossy. Now, this is what we're looking for. Now, this color will vary based on the ingredients that you use. So if you use tomatoes, it would be an even probably richer color than this, but this is mainly come from the sweet potato, the red pepper, the squash. Now, this is the consistency we're looking for. If I get you a, a ladle, Perhaps we can see that a bit better. So it's not super thin, but this is a nice soup consistency. Now grab yourself a bowl. So this is definitely going to be a few lunches for you. So like I say, it freezes really well. You can freeze it, not a problem. You can have it cold if you wanted to. You have it warm, you put a little bit of yogurt on top. You put some chili flakes and more, anything you really want, but that, is the lunch for this week okay so again show me how you do it at home please don't be worried if you haven't got these ingredients you can use anything that you want let me know if you have any questions and i look forward to seeing your pictures have a nice week guys see you later